Okay, so another um, another way of describing physical property, and again, this is for solids, is looking at the shape that the solid is in. So the form of the crystals. So um, this doesn't necessarily have to be cubes or blocks. These are just examples. So for example, salt. Salt, if you look at it up close, it is like little tiny cubes, okay? But describing the shape of the solid could even be describing, you know, is it a fine powder? Is it in large um, chunks or large blocks? Uh, essentially, this is a way of describing the solid configuration, okay? Ductility is a measurement, essentially, of describing if something is able to form thin wires, okay? So not all substances, and again, these are solids. We're talking about you can't make a wire out of a gas or a liquid. Um, some things can make a, a wire and some things cannot. So when something can form a wire, we say that it is ductile, okay? So copper, for example, is one of the most commonly used wires, uh, metals for wires, I should say. So copper is definitely something that is ductile. If something cannot be formed into wires, we would say that it is not ductile. Okay, so chemical properties. So chemical properties are um, ways to describe behave, the behavior of a substance when it reacts with another substance to become something new. So essentially chemical properties is describing a chemical reaction, okay? So all these things that we talked about here, these are not chemical reactions. We're just describing how it is normally on its own. Now, solubility is not a chemical reaction. This is a very common error. All you're doing is you're making a mixture. So you're taking something and you are dissolving it with something else. So for example, that Kool-Aid powder in water that is just a mixture. It's still Kool-Aid powder and water. It's just that now the particles are together. So what we're referring to here is making something completely new, so new particles. So there's only a few that I expect you to know. So one of them is combustibility, or sometimes this is also called flammability. So basically this indicates, is a substance able to burn or explode? So if something is able to burn, we say that it is flammable or combustible. If something is not, we say that it is non-flammable, okay? So for example, water is non-flammable, but paper is flammable. So by saying paper has the ability of burning, that's describing its chemical property. It has the ability to be set on fire, but not everything does. The second type of chemical property is anytime you have something that reacts with an acid. So something being added into an acid, usually this will create a, a chemical change. So chemical changes is actually gonna be your next lesson, but one kind of a preview to that. So how do you know a chemical change has occurred? Usually you see gas bubbles happening. So these are examples of actually, so the liquid inside of these test tubes are all the same. Inside here you, we have hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we have an acid. And each test tube has a different metal that has been added to it. So we have copper and iron and magnesium. So copper, uh, pardon me, so uh, magnesium and iron, if you look at them, you can see magnesium has lots of bubbles. Iron looks like it has some bubbles and copper actually does not look like much is really happening. So by saying magnesium and iron can react with an acid, we're talking about its chemical property. It has the ability to do that. Copper, I would say, does not, does not react with a, an acid, okay? But again, that's describing its unique chemical property. So here we're looking at changes of chemicals. We're looking at chemical reactions. 
Okay, so what I'd like you to do, we have uh, eight different statements that are here. What I'd like you to do is say, is it a physical property or a chemical property? So just like on, jot this down on a piece of paper or something. So just the number and if, if it's a P or a C. And what I'd like to you to also do is write down what type of property is it describing? So for example, is it describing the color of something? Is it describing the density of something? Is it the uh, flammability of something? Um, so take a look, so write down if it's a physical or chemical property and then what type of property it is describing. Pause the video here. Okay, so let's take a look. So we have copper be metal being can be bent. So as a physical property, right, we're not changing the copper, we're just seeing if we can bend it and we can. So this is describing the malleability, right? We're able to bend the copper metal. Salt dissolves in water is a physical property and we're describing here the solubility, right? Glass can be scratched. So that is a physical property and we're describing the hardness. Remember hardness is the ability of being scratched or bent. Sugar is made up of tiny cubes. So this is a physical property. It's kind of hard to see the matching here, but a physical property, and this is describing the crystal form. Helium gas is explosive, is a chemical property, and that is looking at the flammability or combustibility. Alcohol boils at 60 degrees is a physical property. This is the boiling point of alcohol. A match is lit, so this is the chemical property because we're looking at essentially the flammability again. And maple syrup is thicker than water is a physical property and this is describing the viscosity. Okay, so hopefully that kind of helped you to see the difference between physical and chemical properties. Uh, you have some practice with some worksheets for this. I'm also going to, um, you're going to be doing a lab soon, a virtual lab or if COVID is over, if you're watching this when COVID is over, uh, we'll be doing a real lab about this as well.